Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Opetel Prayer Vigil. Welcome you in this sanctuary and over the world. We are the national and international Church of All Nations from the city of Boca Raton, South Florida, United States of America, under the guidance of our senior pastor, Mark D. Boykin, in the spiritual vision of the ministry. One million souls answered the call. In behalf of our pastor, Mark Boykin, myself, uh, Reverend Evangelist Magnus da Silva, and the prayer committee led by Helen and John Lovato, welcome you tonight here in the sanctuary and around the world. Over the internet, we are pre open our meeting tonight, a half hour before the prayer vigil officially starts to ask the God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to guide us in prayer. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. We start to feel the presence of God again over here in the sanctuary. Amen? I like to, to give us a little announcement and little things that great things God doing in our midst right now. And we have a, a prayer line, 24-7 uh, the prayer line. If you are in need of prayer, you call 561-391-2177, station 233, and leave your name and number. A prayer minister representative will contact you. We are here to pray for you and with you. And another feature that we're starting tonight in our prayer vision is you can go in the Boca, Boca Church.com in the site of the prayer meeting, the prayer, the prayer meeting over there, and the prayer video. And uh, um, you go to uh, um, uh, request a life, the prayers that you need. And we're going to pray with you, and you're going to be healed because the word of God is going to be saved tonight. And the glory of God is going to be here. We're starting to feel the presence of the glory of God in the sanctuary, like always. Like the last prayer video when the Pastor Mike Boykin preached to us, and the glory of God take over the sanctuary. It's a beautiful thing. Oh my gosh. Thank God for that. Thank God for our Pastor Mike Boykin. Amen. We're going to start tonight. Uh, in the word of God and um, we're going to pay attention in the God of glory the God of, the God of glory today the glory of God is in the world since it in the beginning the word of God says that the glory and the spirit of God is in all over the world and the glory of God is still present today Amen. You see tremendous power in our midst when you get together. And we feel the presence, we feel the spirit, we feel the glory of God all over in our meetings. Amen. The glory of the Lord is the most awesome and yet probably one of the most misunderstood realities upon this earth. The Bible talks about the glory of the Lord many times in both in the Old and the New Testament. And yet it remains only a vague doctrine to most Christians. The truth is the glory of God should be a central focus in the church and our desire to see and understand it should be utmost in our heart and minds. In Habakkuk 2, 4 says, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. And the glory of the Lord. As the waters cover the sea. That's a lot of knowledge, don't you think? If God wants that much knowledge on a subject, He must really want us to know about it. What do you think? Amen? Hallelujah. In Exodus 33, 12 to 17, Moses contended for God's presence to go with them as a nation. We needed to contend for the presence of God in our lives and our church services. The truth is there are many churches that rarely seek or even desire God's presence in their services. And whether or not He shows up, they have a church anyway. Hallelujah. This is sad, but 
networking group. The example of Moses. Moses contended for God's presence to go with him. In verse 17, God responds by saying that, I will do this thing that you have spoken, for you have found grace in my sight, and I know you by name. Oh, hallelujah. Now, you will have it tough that Moses will have it quit right there, no? But he did. He did it. I believe that he was waiting for this moment his whole life. Yes? He wanted God's presence to go with him. But he wanted something greater. Something greater. He wants to see God's glory. Oh, hallelujah. He said, please show me your glory. What a prayer. Please show me your glory. What a prayer. God, show us tonight your glory. Be waiting for me under your glory, Lord. Hallelujah. He not only wanted to know that God was with him, he wanted the manifest presence of God, or we could say the presence of God made known to him. Hallelujah. If Moses could see the glory of God, I believe that as a child of God, as a child of God, I can see the glory too. Don't you believe in that? Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians, it says, But we all, with unveiled face, behold it in, in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible also helps us where we can find the knowledge of the glory of God. The book of Corinthians says, For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Spending time alone with beholding Him and worship Him will cause you to have a great and greater hunger for his presence and his revealed glory in your life. Seeing him in the word and crying out for the reality of God in your life will bring you into glorious experience with him. Amen? I remember last prayer vision when our pastor, our senior pastor, Mark the boy, a first read in Isaiah 6.1 pastor read like this the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim freedom from the captives. And releases from darkness for the prisoner. Oh, hallelujah. When the pastor start with that, we can feel the presence of the Lord. We can feel the glory come down in the sanctuary. Amen. And Pastor Boyd can agree in Psalm 24. So we should fall down under the weight of the glory that will come out of the sanctuary. This, this is a great moment when the pastor boy can minister to the people tremendous signs and wonderful uh, occur as the glory of God fall and fill the room to many call to ask for prayers. Some testimonies that we hear later on after the service say, I mean, out of the sanctuary, in the presence of the Lord, listening to the piano songs that are touched play, he spent the time in the glory. Oh my God. When you hear this, you see, it's not only me, it's not only you, it's each and every one of you here feel the presence of the Lord. Amen? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. From the beginning to the end of the fellowship with the Lord's glory, we feel the presence in the sanctuary. Amen? And we feel it in, in the people's face shine bright because the glory is present right here. I start to, to, to feel the heat in my face right now. Oh, hallelujah. Like Moses. When Moses returned from seeing the glory of God, 
the skin of his face shined so brightly that he had to cover it because the people could not look at him. Amen? This is the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For many years, God has taught me about his glory. Usually I have some experience. I'd like to share tonight some experience that I had on the glory of God. I have it too many, too many times. I feel the presence. I feel the glory. And when you have this meeting somewhere in our church that our pastor boy led, led us in the, in the prayer, you see the glory, you see the presence, you see the people call and see the, uh, uh, the, the hand of God, the glory of God that heal people. Because in the glory, is everything is surprised supernaturally. In the glory, have no sickness. In the glory, have no bondage. Everything is perfect because the God's spirit is perfect. Amen? A couple of years ago, when I feel the presence, I feel the glory of God, I've been in, in, in um, an emergency room because I have a tremendous, tremendous pain in my body, in my sides. And I stayed the whole day in the emergency room in Boca Raton. And the, after the, all the tests, all the x-ray, all the CAT scans, they come up with the diagnosis that I have one kidney dead, completely black in, in the picture, and another one full of kidney stones. And the doctors tell me, you have to go to the hospital, to the emergency surgery, because you have the only one uh, kidney, and this kidney is a full of rocks, of kidney stones. So I've been in the uh, Delray Hospital, and I, I bring all the tests, all the, the, the diagnosis that they come from the, the, the emergency room. And the doctors tell me, you have insurance? I say, no, I don't have insurance. But I have God. They say, oh, I, I want to make some uh, um, accounts to see how much you would have to pay for. You have to pay for the surgery. And they come up with uh, fifteen to $17,000. Brother and sister, I don't have the money. I don't have the money. I back home. I tell my wife, Sonia, they, I have to do the surgery, this and this and that. I have that problems. And uh, we don't have the money. And Sonia tell me, wow, it's uh, too expensive. What are we, we gonna get, what are we gonna do? And Sonia called Brazil. In Brazil cost the half price and going to be a seven thousand dollars. Then you're gonna put in a credit card and we're gonna pay installments. And I go over there and, and do the surgery. Next day, we have to, to set up everything, pay with the credit card number. And that night, before the morning, they have to, to, to pay the tickets. I'm in prayer. I'm in prayer. I'm, I'm, I'm in prayer. 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 In my home, in my bed. And I have myself shrunk like, you know, when you pray, praying. And he will have a pain. And you press one on God. And suddenly I open my eyes and I'm in the top of my home. And I see my body inside of my, of my wife and the bright lights coming and fill the home. It's a bright light. The light of the sun is not compared, brother and sister. For you watching the internet right now, this is, is the glory of God. I didn't see Jesus. I'm confessing, I didn't see Jesus, but the voice coming in that bright light, and the voice says, Magnus, they say my name, because the Bible says God knows our name before we born. Amen? Amen? They say, Magnus, you don't need to go to Brazil, you don't need me to travel, you don't need me to go to hospitals, you don't need to do nothing, because I'm going to break with my hammer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! And I believe in that word. And I believe in that word. And I, I ask my wife, Sonia, is this happening right now? I'm seeing the glory of God, and God tells me that going to take it with his hammer. Who has a hammer in the Bible? Who works with the hammer in the Bible? Jesus, no. Jesus! That's the name. That's the, our healer. So, I tell my wife, and my wife it, it, tell me, okay, we're going to believe it because we believe in the Word of God. 
And so they tell me, we're going to keep in praying. So next day, my brother and sister, the devil is a liar. Amen. The next day, a couple, a friend of mine, bring another couple from New York, a rich, a rich couple. They have a lot of money. They have an apartment in the beautiful beach in the, in the beach. Uh, my friends tell them that my situation, that I need to do the surgery and I have no money. They come in my house the next day. The next day, I did a barbecue with pain for my daughter, Natasha, to have a, a, a birthday party. And this couple came with the cash money to give it to me to do the surgery. I think in my mind, Dad, you are a liar. You are coming to rob, to kill, to destroy, you know, the words and the works of God. In my mind, I think that. In my heart, I have the assurance of uh, that God is here with me. And I say to this couple, listen, I really appreciate what you're doing, but get the money and find somebody really need it. Because I have a God that promises they're going to take each and every one without pain. That's what God tell me, and I believe in the word. I say to them, when I say to this couple, he says, he started to cry, he started to see, I, I think they think I'm a crazy because I don't get a penny from them, you know. If that's the God we serve. When you believe in God and you see the glory of God, you have to keep it. Keep it under that glory, you know. You have to be clean in your heart, in your mind, in your body, in all of you. Because the glory is the glory, nothing compared with the glory of God. So, I say this to them, you know, the whole, the whole day I, I'm still in pain, I'm still in prayer, I'm still, you know. And the, the night, when I go to bed, I tell my wife, listen, Sonia, I feel something different. I'm going to lay down a little bit because I'm not okay. And I have a lot such a pain in the stage, that, you know, the whole day and do stuff and do this and that, you know. Barbecuing for friends, for my, my little daughter has a, a birthday party. When they lay down in the bed, <laughs> the same way I feel bad, I feel something is not right. I lay down in the bed, and my wife tell me this. Did you want to stop uh, uh, fasting? Do you want to you go to, to, the, to the hospital? I say, no, son. I'm not going to stop fasting. I'm not going to do nothing. I'm going to, going to believe you in the glory of God, and I believe what God tell me. So the same, same way that <laughs> I lay down, I say to my wife, Sonia, I have to get up because something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. When we make glory, something is going to happen. And it happens for good. So I go to the bathroom, and I start to, to cry out. I start to laughing. I start to to have a tremendous joy because it's starting to pass by 10, by 8, by 12, the kidney stone is getting up to 108 kidney stone is getting out without pain. That's the glory of God. And you believe the glory of God, you get delivered, you get healed. And you see this in too many meetings that I have. The glory of God is present. And the people get healed. And the people get delivered. Because the presence of the Lord is good. The presence of the Lord is our healing. Like in Isaiah 53, in 1 Peter 2 to 4, they say, For his stripes we are healed. When we believe in that, and we gaze in this glory, you get delivered and you get healed. Amen? Amen. I have too many testimonies to give it with the glory of God. But this one, I, I can't forget this because this is, is something that you not see every day. Amen? I like to share with you guys tonight the glory of God that I feel the presence and that tangent presence that we see over here in this sanctuary. Amen? Hallelujah! Uh, so many people want to understand it with their heads. 
They will never get it. God's glory cannot be understood in the mind. It must be received in the spirit. There are several paracasts to walk in the glory. Number one is losing your dignity. Religious people will never, never understand the preciousness or the power of God's glory. You must be willing to humble yourself. When you humble yourself, you're going to see the presence. You're going to see the glory of God. You have to humble yourself and become like a little child. Sometimes God will require you to do something that seems very foolish. Remember the foolish of God as a wiser than man's wisdom? A lot of people balking are being asked to do something different in church because they have become religiously comfortable. I will often initiate drinking from the river of life in church. <laughs> I just give you the testimony what you have in the last prayer vision when Pastor Mark de Boyk leads the glory of God in this sanctuary. And you see the face of the people shine. And if you the request that we have over here, I'm sure, I'm for sure that God release that people that send the request, they send the prayer request. Via internet, via phone, that you have in that service, last prayer vision. And that's the glory is here right now. In Revelation 22, 17 tells us that we can freely take the water of life. Jesus said that if we are thirsty, we can come to him and drink. And living water will flow out of our bellies. Right around this time, there are always people who get offended and refuse to drink. Some leave the service, you know, because they get offended. They think it's too childish and unscriptural, but really, they don't want to look bad in front of everyone else. I remind them that Jesus said, suffer the little children to come into me, for such is the kingdom of God. <laughs> Those he said, little children, what do little children like to do? Well, most they like to eat, drink, and play. Amen? Especially play. And you know, you can all do the three things in church with respect and with order. Amen? The glory of God brings the fullness of the kingdom of God into our midst. Oh, hallelujah. Heaven is not a doctrine, it's a reality. Jesus taught us to pray, the kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. How close is the kingdom of heaven today? How close is the kingdom of heaven today, my brothers and sisters? For those that are watching the internet right now, you are so close of the glory. Hallelujah. Jesus said, that the king of heaven is a hand. Is at a hand. You stretch your hand. God kingdom come. Something has to move it. And God won't be. Oh, I won't be the one who's moving. When God's glory comes, it moves our stagnation, religion, and anything else that's standing his ways. It is time that the church moves into the fullness, fullness, the fullness of her destiny in God. In Haggai 2 9 tells us that the glory of the Lord, the glory of the leather house will be greater than the former. A lot of people go around looking for the perfect church. They will never find it. God does not promise us that the leather house will be greater. He says that the glory of the leather house will be greater don't look for the greater house. Look for the greater glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. in a house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What kind of church is Jesus looking for? In Ephesians 5, 27, tell us that he is looking for a glorious church. Glorious means filled with the glory. Hallelujah. At the dedication of the temple, after 
after Solomon prayed, the Bible says that fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. And the priests could not enter the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord has filled the Lord's house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles 7, 1. I believe that God wants his church to look like that. Do you think the world will notice the church if the glory of God fall on us to that degree? Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that. I believe that day is coming when the world will see the glory of the Lord upon the church. Isaiah 6, 1 and 2 tell us, Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Then, he says, the Gentiles shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. <laughs> when the glory has come upon you, people will know. People will know that the glory come upon you. Amen? Give me glory in the house to the Lord. Hallelujah. One thing we must understand is that the glory of the Lord is not just a doctrine. We read about it in the Bible, face it. Many Christians do not really believe it. The things they say they believe. For instance, if I were to ask a church full of people, how many of them believe in so many? Most hands will go up and the people will say, yes. I believe that Christians out to win, win souls for Christ. Whoever, whoever. If I were to ask the same crowd, how many are actively winning souls for Christ? Most men will go down. Why? They do not believe in soul winning. It's sad. They do not believe in soul winning. It's sad. It's sad. They believe in the doctrine. doctrine of the soul winning. If they really believe that Christians will win souls, they will be going and doing every day. Again, if you were to ask most charismatic or Pentecostal people if they believe in divine healing, they will say yes. But if I were to ask them if they regularly pray for the sick and see them heal, most will say no. Why? Most of us do not really believe in divine healing. We believe in the doctrine of divine healing. It's a big, big difference. We need to teach and believe in the right doctrine. Whoever, if all of you have is a bag of right doctrine and no reality of those doctrines in your life, you will be in big trouble when you stand before the Lord. The Bible tells us clearly that we must be doers of the word. No hearers, only deceiving ourselves. The Bible tells us the whole world is full of the glory of the Lord. So how do you make this a reality and not something you just hear or talking about? There are several things you can do that will help you walk in a continuous flow of God. Oh, that's what you're doing tonight. You come in here because you know the glory is flowing over here. That's the glory. It's the mantle of the glory under our pastor Martin White, our angel of this church. You guys see every Sunday, Wednesdays, and there are prayer visions. The glory of God present in this church. The mantle, the word of God is here. The glory of God is here. Amen. And he is especially desiring to show you his glory and reveal to you the answers of his ways. He wants to give us a greater and greater understanding of the glory so that we can walk in his fullness. One of the first steps we must take is to realize the power of the cross in the victory. Hallelujah. The power of the cross in victory. Hmm. That was one there. That glory is one in the cross. God gave me the message. 
No blood. No glory. We must realize that without the sacrifice that Jesus paid on the cross, we will not even have the desire to know him. Let alone his glory. The death and the resurrection of Christ opened up a new and living way for mankind. So that we could really get to know the God who created us. When I look at the cross, I see two sides. First, I see that the death of Jesus takes away sin. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 1.29 That is what we are, we are saved from. Next, I see that the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ saved us to something, not just from sin. We are saved from sin. But we are also saved to enjoy the glorious life in the spirit that he has promised for every believer. The life will begin the moment you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have eternal life now. Not when you die. You have it now. Now you have eternal life. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The kingdom is in you today. The kingdom People, I say the kingdom is in you today. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> you can walk as more than a conquer today. You have been given dominion today. I want to say that again. You have been given dominion today. Dominion from the dark, from the prince of this world. Because you have the spirit of God inside of you. It's the greatest. It's the greater that the spirit inside of you in this in this world. Amen? Amen. That's the word for tonight. That's the glory of God. That's a little testimony of what's happened in my life. And that's the, the wisdom that I'm passionate with the Lord. And I believe it, you have the same passion that I have, the same words that I that I say today is coming from the Bible. It's supposed to be in your heart. Because easy in my heart. Amen. Again, you are the Obetel prayer video. Welcome you in the sanctuary and all over the world via the internet. You are national and international church of nation from the city of Boca Raton, South Florida, United States. Under the guidance of our senior pastor Mark de Boykin, in the spiritual vision of the millions, one million souls, those are the call. In behalf of our pastor Mark de Boykin, myself, Reverend Evangelist Magnus da Silva, and the prayer committee led by Reverend John Lorado, we welcome you here in the sanctuary around the world with the internet. You are, by now, is going to open our meeting officially for the prayer vision for this week. And uh, I have a good news. Yeah. God always gives us a good news. We have a prayer line 24 7, and we have it in the prayer meetings in the site of the uh, Boca, www.bocaschurch.com. You can go in the prayer meetings and request your prayer. And we go in tonight alive. Respond to you. We're going to pray for you and with you alive. Request whatever you need tonight. The glory of God is present right here, right now. In the glory of God, have no sickness. Everything is supplied supernaturally. And you have a phone line. It's a 24-7 prayer line. You can request to leave your name, your number. The call is 561-391-2177, extension 233. If you are watching in the internet right now, especially in Brazil, I know many people watch in Brazil and in Africa. You can go www.bocachurch.com. Go in a prayer ministry. They have a special. We're starting to do this today. And we are special over there. You can request your prayer. You leave your name. You leave your name. And you watch the internet. We're going to pray for your sickness. And God going to deliver you. Because for his stripe you are healed. And we are a church that believe. We are a Pentecostal church that believe in the spirit of God. The same spirit that comes in Pentecost is right here right now with us. Amen. 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 I ask you to, to 
Reverendo John Lodaro to take over and uh, officially start our prayer vision for tonight. Amen. Give us, give, give. Come on. Start and tell the Lord.